So for, um, for number 10, I am taking these curves and I am um, re going to revolve the area between them about the y-axis. So let's draw these. Oh, that was very, very poor. Um, let's try and keep it here. Yeah. So for our first one, we're going to have uh, y is equal to x squared divided by 4. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider that these are scaled down to 1 half. So this is 1, 2. Uh, maybe they're scaled down to 1 quarter, yeah. So that is 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 quarter, and then 1. Yeah, so it should go something like this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then that is, should be 1, 2, 3, four. yeah. So our curve should go something like this. Oops. Our curve should go something like this, and it opens up very, very wide. This is our y is equal to 1 quarter x squared. Um, and then we have our line. Let's see. We have our line x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 0. So our line x is equal to 2 is going to be... Um, I'll draw this in a different color. will be this line over here. This is our line x is equal to 2. And lastly, we have um, y is equal to 0, which is just the y-axis, right? So this is our y is equal to 0. Um, so the area bounded between these curves is this, this area here. And then we want to um, revolve it about the y-axis, yeah. So we want to revolve it um, like so. So for us to revolve it around the y-axis, we are going to have um, we are going to have disks over here. So it's going to to look something like well, actually, we're going to have washers, right? So when we revolve it, it's going to look something like so. Uh, this is a pretty terrible drawing, but. Hopefully, you guys can understand it. So let's see, it goes like here, and then it goes all the way around, yeah. So this is our, our disk, and in this disk, when we revolve it, we can see that we're going to actually, we're going to sum up these areas. Um, maybe I'm going to shade this in a little bit to give it some depth, yeah. So what we're seeing here is that our our washer it um it has an upper boundary that is defined by this uh, x equals two and the lower boundary is defined by the green curve right um so what we're thinking is that we're revolving all these disks and then when we sum them up it's going to turn into a solid right um so what we're going to think here is how can we calculate this area over here um and let's draw this in so how can we calculate the area of our disk well this area is just the pi uh, a1 minus a2 right where um this over here is r1 and the shorter one here is r2 so the way that we calculate this area is we go okay the bigger uh circle goes pi r1 squared and then the smaller circle is just minus pi r2 squared and if we subtract the smaller circle from the bigger one we're going to be left with this um this kind of ring around it which is what we want so now that we have this um we are almost ready to integrate but we do need to um we do need to express everything in terms of as a function of y because we're integrating it with respect to y. Um, and the reason that we're integrating with respect to y is because we're actually going to be summing up um, like these little this, these little widths that go here. 
this is actually going to be sort of a 3D shape. And this little width here is our dy because it's like a chunk of the y-axis. So let's express the green function as um, a function of y. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply everything by 4. Uh, so we have that 4, 4y four is equal to x x squared, and lastly, x is equal to, we're going to take the square root, um, 2 square root of y. Uh, so we're just looking at the, the positive root, right? Because we're only looking, um, we're going to be considering that it's going from 2 all the way to this curve, which is the positive root. If we were to take the negative root, then we would consider this other side. So we've expressed the green curve, and... Now we are ready to we are ready to integrate. So our integral goes from actually we are not ready to integrate because we do not know where this point is. This point over here. So to find these this point, um, we do have to set these curves equal to each other so we can see where they intersect. So we have that uh, one fourth x squared is equal to, and here is. No, and we have to express it in terms of x, right? Because we're not comparing y since the blue curve doesn't have a y component. So we have 2 root y is equal to 2. And then therefore, um, root y is equal to, if we divide both sides by 2, is equal to 1. And therefore, y is equal to 1. So these points intersect at 1. And they're, we're going to then integrate it from 0, right? Which is where the green curve touches the x-axis to 1. So we're going to integrate um, from 0 to 1, and then we're going to integrate pi times the, uh, the biggest radius, right, minus pi times the smallest radius. So the biggest radius has a radius of 2, so pi times 2 squared, and then minus pi times the smaller radius. So 2 root y squared and then times dy. Um, so once we have this, we are ready to integrate. Let's just put pi outside because it is a constant. Um, and then we have 4 minus 2 squared is 4. So root y squared is y. And then all this times dy. Okay. Let's take the integral, so this is pi times, let's see, this is 4y minus um, 2y squared, and then evaluated from 0 to 1. So when we evaluate these boundaries, we're going to go, this is pi times 4 times 1, 4 minus 2 times 1 squared times 2, and then... Um, <clears throat> We are, when we apply the lower boundary, it's just going to go to zero, right? It's going to disappear. So this ends up being, let's see, 2 pi um, cubic units, since it doesn't specify the units, right? Uh, so all we did was we expressed these curves um, in terms of, as a function of y. Um, we found the points of intersection. It goes from zero to one. That's our boundaries of integration. And then we saw that the the volume is actually just going to be um, the biggest, the biggest disk, which whose radius is two, um, minus the smallest disk whose radius uh, touches the green curve, and that is our answer.